Look at it so very easy. My name is Laura and I know we can buy eyeglass cases, but there's something fun about making them. We can make them the size we want, the fabric we want, and we can always add a hidden surprise. We're going to need two pieces of fabric, one for the outside, one for the inside, and a piece of this sewable foam. I'm starting with a piece that's nine and a half inch square. From there, I just want to make sure that my glasses are going to fit inside with room to spare. If you need it bigger than nine and a half inches, do this right at the very beginning. The sunglass case is a drawstring pouch, so we're going to need a little bit of a drawstring and these little clips for the end of the string, and that's going to keep that pouch closed. And if you happen to have a cleaning cloth for your glasses, this will be another thing we're going to be able to add. So depending on the size of your glasses, you'll have to adjust your fabric. I have a nine and a half inch piece of foam and fabric that's a little bit bigger. And the first thing I want to do is quilt the top fabric to my foam. And this is another reason why it's nice to have it a little bit bigger. The case is going to have one seam along the side and one along the bottom. So you can always fussy cut your fabric to fit. Put that sewable foam on top of your fabric and do a couple of rows of stitching. You can always use quilt batting, but the foam has a little bit more stability to it and it's a little bit thicker, so it's going to protect the glasses more. And you can quilt over top of it without having to have another piece of fabric. And it can also be quilted any way you'd like. The quilt pattern I chose was just a cross hatch with an inch and a half space. When you do quilt, it does shrink a little bit and that's why it's nice to start with something a little bit bigger. From here, we're going to do a little bit of sewing first and then we're going to trim off the seam allowances. Put right sides together of both fabrics. Following the top of the foam, do a row of straight stitching and get as close as you can to the foam. Stitch that line coming on and off the fabric. We now have that piece stuck together at the top. It's really easy to work with this because we have some extra to hold on to. We need to do two rows of stitching down the sides, but we're only going to do a very little bit. But first we're going to draw some little lines to give us some markings. From the top down, put a quarter inch mark on both sides. From that line down, do half an inch. One more measurement and that'll be a quarter of an inch. So from the top of the foam, we're one inch. So this is what it looks like. We have that quarter inch, the half inch, and the quarter inch. We need to stitch this top quarter inch and the bottom quarter inch, but we're going to leave this piece open. We do it to both sides and we can stitch right along the edge of this foam. Do a little bit of a back stitch here and a little bit of a back stitch here and do that to both sides. It's really hard to see it on the back, but I do have some stitching here and some stitching there and that's that half inch opening. The next thing we will do is trim a seam allowance. The seam allowance is going to be cut from the outside over. So if you want a quarter inch, you're going to need to leave a quarter inch. If you want half an inch, we need a half inch. So whatever your seam allowance is, that's what you're going to need to cut all the way around this piece of foam. With that extra trimmed off, we're going to be able to finish stitching the bag. We have that top row stitched and that little bit up at the top. So when we open it up, we will notice that a portion is stitched right here at the top. We're going to be able to put this bag together. Take this and open it up. Pull the lining to one side and the bag to the other. And we're going to have that little bit stitched up here at the top. And fold this right in half. We need to match up those seams. That one inch little stitching we did is going to be the top, the drawstring of the bag. So we need to keep that out of the way. Matching up those seams, stitch down the lining all the way. And when you get to the corner, come all the way off to the end. So you're stitching a big L. The stitch along the outside of the bag has made the outside of the bag finished. Roll that top fabric down and those seams will automatically match up. Start stitching right there where the threads end and come all the way down. Leave the bottom of the bag open because we will need this to turn the whole bag right side out. We have the front of the bag stitched together and the lining of the bag stitched together. 
and we have that flap up at the top. Snip off a little bit of the fabric on the two corners of the front and on the two corners of the front of the bag. We just want to remove a little extra fabric so there's not so much bulk in those corners. Take the bag and turn it right side out. Be sure to poke out the corners of the bottom of the front of the bag. Up at the top you're going to have two areas that you're going to be able to poke out. And those were those very top. Turn those raw edges so that they're facing inside. And this is where you can add a cleaning cloth. By adding it into the bottom of the bag, it means it will always be there when you need it. I'm going to just tuck one of those corners in, do a row of top stitch so I'm closing the bottom of the bag off, but I'm also holding this cloth in. I now will always have my cleaning cloth handy. Push that lining into the inside of the bag. To finish this up, we need to do two rows of stitching along the top of the bag. Be sure to tuck the lining in so you have that nice straight edge along the top. Be sure those pins are out of the way as we do those two rows of stitching. The first one is going to be that quarter inch all the way around. The second one is going to be that half inch space. So we're duplicating the measurements in this little top. This little one inch area is where we're going to be able to put the drawstring. You can feed this in through the good old safety pin way or use a flexible bobkin. A flexible bobkin is designed so that it can fit into small areas. That little half inch is that opening we left right at the very beginning. We're going to be able to get that in and it's going to go all the way around. These little stoppers often come in packages of two. You can also get them singular. Be sure that the string will fit inside the holes of these little stoppers. I will often tape the ends of my string so that they don't fray. So it'd be like a shoelace end. Squeeze the unit together and just like a shoelace, thread the end through the holes. You need both ends coming out in the same direction. This little piece is a lock and it's going to lock the string into the position that you stop that lock at. When you squeeze it open, you're going to be able to move into either direction. But as soon as you let go, it locks it. For the end, we're going to be able to take this and tie it into a knot. That knot will prevent the end from coming off. You can trim off the ends and let them fray. Now we have that stopper on the end of the bag, so it's not going to come off, but it will also lock the bag closed. The ends of the string do not have to be overly long, just enough that you can hold on to them. The great part about this case is not only does it store my glasses, but I can reach in and pull out that lining, which has my eyeglass cleaner. I'm going to be able to clean my glasses and then stick that lining right back in the bag. Now I will always have my eyeglass cleaner right handy in my case. I have it the size I want, the fabric I want, and I have the great advantage of having a little hidden surprise, a built-in cleaning cloth that I know I will never lose. and It will be there when I need it. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.